Tara. How are you? Yeah. Gravity's been hard on you, I hear, this week. I fell through the floor three times. I'm saying. I'm going to give people an abbreviated uh, explanation. You turn your speaker down a little bit and hear myself in it. Sorry. Um, I'm going to give people an abbreviated explanation of what's been going on. I told people at the start of the live show. But, um, I live in a very old house, and it has problems. Designed badly because some cost cutter made a wonderful decision to build the floors out of uh, medium density fiberboard. Those of you who are in countries that don't do stupid things with construction, like this medium density fiberboard is sawdust and glue that is extruded into slabs that resemble but are not wood. Awesome. We had some serious leaking problems here, and I, I, I don't know how many of you are scientists or are inclined to chemistry, but when wood comes into contact, I mean, when, when water comes into contact with sawdust, they don't play well together. Even if there's glue involved, the glue just sort of flicks off at that point. Yeah. Um, so we ended I'm up... I notoriously afraid of getting wet. I don't know if people know that. Yeah. So we ended up with... Um, the floors have been a mess for a while. It's an expensive fix. It took us a while to arrange things. In the meanwhile, we've had like plywood down over the joists to just deal with the house. But now we're getting it fixed. And in the process of doing so, uh, we were pulling up the old vinyl flooring to because hey, anything a contractor has to do, he charges you. For. If right. we did it ourselves, save some money there. We're smart. We're smart. Except, um, apparently that vinyl flooring had been doing a lot more work than we anticipated. Because after we got it up, in the process of getting it up, um, some of those spots where the water had destroyed the MDF, I went through the floor. I went all the way into the crawl space. And the first time this happened, I was like, oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, wow. <laughs> that's that's hilarious man. it's it's good we're getting this fixed huh because look at this this yeah. is terrible what's that sound i landed on a pipe oh. i broke all of the pipes all of them tara i broke every every pipe all of the every pipe if it was a pipe it was i broke them all on a saturday evening so not only was it an emergency call on a weekend after hours yeah. for a plumber who had to, it took him three hours to get here. I had a devil of a time finding the water main at the road because it was buried under overgrowth of grass. I was out there with a shovel for an hour and a half, try, desperately Jesus. trying to find the pipe to shut it off. The plumber got here. He had to crawl into the crawl space, and we're in the house as he's trying to, to rummage around under there in the dark, in the cold, for a giant leak. It's already been streaming for a while down there, so he's, he's in puddles of nastiness. The, sa the, the, the stream of obscenity that drifted up <laughs> through our air vents was magical. And not only that, Loki objected to the floor <laughs> cursing at him. <laughs> so you can't talk to him like that. So <laughs> like you think you're better than me, Floor? Fucking Floor? I stand on you. So we had so we didn't actually save any money. We had a miraculous week. But good news is the contractor is here as scheduled. We got the the wall painted in the den. Yes, we had to pay more. Oh well. Fucking wall. Um the, we now have plywood floors installed. We have, we're going to get vinyl in the kitchen. We're going to get some nice wood laminate in the halls and the den. It's going to look nice. Um, it's going to support humans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we oh, th this is, this is, this is the picture that's just going to, to, this is the one that made my soul leave my body. That right there, my friends, is a joist that has rotted completely. And that's no bueno. We had to replace that. Yeah. Because it was gone. 
We were walking on that for a while. Yay. We have we have a lot of work to do. It's not it's it's not as bad as it seems, and I guess it is. It costs money, but it's not like we're spending like a hundred thousand dollars. No, we're, we're it, it's yeah. But anytime you're taking a large expense for something like that, it's stressful. It is. We are in heavy duty. We're moving next week. Yes, you are. The movers come Thursday, and then we get in the car with three surly cats. And we drive for three days to the Great West. So like. Shit's getting boxed up. We got angry cats because their world is upside down. Dan went in the basement and broke down bookcases today, and we haven't seen Dottie since. Oh, yeah, the pets here have hated every second of all this. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, and we're like, it's only going to get worse. I'm sorry. At least three or four times a day, Simba just walks up to me and yells at me. Yeah. It's just like, what is happening? Very we've nice. had we've had to keep Grady locked in here because there have been giant holes in the floor, and he's yeah. an idiot. So yeah. he'll jump in the giant holes, well, and we'll never we'll never see him again. Yeah. All right. So that's a little update on what's been going on. We're both having an exciting time. Oh, you're gonna have sto- I feel you're going to have more stories than me by the time the move is over. We're road tripping with three cats. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be a party. All right, let's get the intro going because we have a lot. Each week, yeah, Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. We like to call. Oh, yeah, and for those of you who are asking, what's that thing in the background over there? That's our entertainment center, okay? We have no other place to put it. The den is just, it's, everything's, it's, it's. Half your house literally doesn't have a bottom. Well, no, it's got a bottom now. It's got but a bottom. It hasn't had a bottom. No, it hasn't. We had to move everything. Um. Hello, Grady. What are you doing back there? I see you. Oh, hi, Grady. I'm sitting on the amp. This is my spot. All right. Well, first off, this week, I hate this woman so much. Not just because of what she did, but goddamn, just the mugshot alone. This is one of the most punchable mugshots you will see all week, especially when you add it to what happened. Bethany woman arrested after bullets she shot at her phone went through her neighbor's wall. Washington County, Oregon. A 35-year-old woman was arrested in the Bethany neighborhood early New Year's Day after she shot a bullet at her phone, which went through her neighbor's wall. Reported that a woman fired her gun at her cell phone and the bullet traveled through it and her neighbor's wall. No injuries were reported. Deputies say... What? Thank God. Yeah. Deputies said a neighbor called saying a bullet came through their bedroom wall. Sheriff's office said it appeared the suspect in this case may have been holding the phone at the time the gun went off, but they don't know if it was shot intentionally. So this is what she did, quite likely. She was taking a selfie with her gun. Look at where the look at where the bullet is placed on that on that that screen. It's aimed. She was taking a selfie with her loaded gun, and it went the fuck off. And look at just that smiling mugshot. Can you hear Simba carrying his baby around? I don't know if you can hear that. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... She's way too pleased with herself for someone that could have fucking killed somebody. That is Rosemary Anarski. And no, and, and Charsky, sorry. And Charsky. Faces charges of, un- charge of unlawful use of a weapon and recklessly endangering to be held on $1,000 bail. <sighs> like, I could go off on the not everybody needs a fucking gun thing, but I feel like it, this is more of a Dan gun safety is your fucking friend thing. Yeah, that's some shit smack gun. Because, like, safety off, loaded. 
pointing it at stuff. Like, as I understand it, those are the holy trinity of don't do that. Neither that is, didn't get the shit smacked out of him by a drill sergeant. And I feel like more people need that. <laughs> like, in general. Just in general. It's it's important to know that neither an iPhone nor drywall is bulletproof. No. So when a bullet goes through, it just keeps on going. It's it's having it's going on a journey. Yeah. Uh, just the, the I, God, that that mug shot is just it's like nails on chalkboard. You Ugh. fucking idiot. Fuck you, Karen. <laughs> Seriously. Karen's got a gun. Worst Aerosmith song ever. Hi. I'm going to have to get used to all the radio and TV stations starting with K. Yes. I've lived in W land my whole life. Oh. Next up, we have some. Uh, oh, of course, we have fireworks problems. Of course, it's the week after New Year's. Of course, there's fireworks. Um, New Year's become a fireworks holiday because I don't remember that from when I was a kid. Fireworks outside New Jersey movie theater cause gunfire scare. That's never been a thing up here. Howell movie theater was evacuated Wednesday evening. Patrons mistook the sound of fireworks that were set off outside the building for gunshots. Wednesday evening being New Year's Day. Not New Year's Eve. New oh Year's God. Day. Um, people inside the Escape Theater on Route 9 called 911 believing they heard gunshots and police arrived quickly. Officers began evacuating patrons and detaining them to figure out what happened. Officers then learned the theater manager confronted a man who lit fireworks outside. The fireworks were located and determined no shots were fired. Yeah, those are what are called mortars. Those are, those are mortar fireworks. They shoot like fucking cannonball things. Um... Our old police later updated the post to say the 23-year-old Lakewood man was arrested and criminally charged. The man lit off fireworks while a friend was proposing marriage at the nearby climb zone. Proposing marriage at the, the climb zone. zone. For those I mean, I guess of whatever your interests are, cool. For those of you who don't know what the climb zone is, it's a rock climbing uh center like it's like it's like rock climb laser tag only rock climb i mean if you're big into rock climbing and you both are then cool but maybe you don't need pyrotechnics like dan proposed to me as he was picking me up for my job because that ring was burning a hole in his pocket and he couldn't take it anymore which was great it was very cute i immediately got to flash my ring to all my coworkers. But we didn't do fireworks in the lens crafter. <laughs> I thought about because that would have been inappropriate. You know, I was sitting here thinking, you know, at least do something like sprinklers. But then I really, I remember that sprinklers are magnes are essentially a tiny magnesium flare, and that's not a good thing either. Yeah, but at least they don't make noise, and you know, no, they don't make noise, but they burn through things. You could do those little honk things, or. There are ways, like, you could do little confetti thing, like. Welcome to 2020 America, where any large explosion, that's pretty much a sign to run for your life. Yeah. It's we're, not... also, we're so obsessed with everything looking cool on social media that we can never just do a thing. Like, he proposed to me picking me up from my job. It's not on video. There was no choreographed dance number. No fireworks, like, just fucking live, guys. And I say this as someone who is 100% going to post 72 videos of me driving cross country with three cats, but... <laughs> well, it'll be hilarious is why. Yeah. But like, not everything needs to be for the gram. We're, we're at a point in America where it used to be a long time ago, if you heard some, a noise like that, your first thought was, oh, car backfire. Now it's get the fuck, get in the tub. The tub yeah. is bulletproof. All right. Uh, next up. Oh, this is what we call chutzpah. It's a wonderful word. Chutzpah. This, this is chutzpah. 
Bond issued for two men accused of trying to cash fake $100,000 lottery ticket. Oh, Culprits funny. used glue to attach winning numbers to losing lottery tickets. Two men are accused of trying... 4,000 pop-ups this website's giving me. Here we go. Two men accused of trying to cash a fake $100,000 lottery ticket face a judge today. Otis Latham, 47, and Russell Sparks, 48, both of Columbus, face a judge Tuesday. Both suspects pled not guilty. More chutzpah. Um, Florida police arrested Latham and Sparks. Uh, Would-be crooks used super glue to attach winning numbers to a losing lottery ticket and try to cash it. <laughs> I mean, nobody checks this thing. Nobody. They they did give out money to anybody who's like, look, I won. It's a photocopy. You trust me, right? They didn't even use something like Elmer's glue or or rubber cement. They used super glue. <laughs> Folks, what what's the what, what's something that super glue is not like? Paper. Super glue gets crunchy. It gets solid. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Why is the bottom of this ticket like plastic? Uh... Also, though, if you're going to do this, go for more money. I know, right? Because the, the trying to cash a counterfeit lottery ticket is a crime punishable by up to 20 years in prison and a $50,000 fine. So there's half your money. And the rest is taxes, so you're fucked. Yeah. But I just... The balls on these guys, Christ Almighty! What were you thinking? Oh, I mean, this the perfect crime. They'll never know. Yeah. Not exactly waking Ned Divine, you fellas. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> next up. Oh, sweetie, why? Um. I sigh so much doing this show. Dipping sauce rage lands woman in jail. Patron, 19, threatened to rob McDonald's. Incensed she would have to pay extra for dipping sauce, a McDonald's customer threatened to rob the restaurant and warned she would get the condiments, quote, by whatever means necessary. As detailed in the rest affidavit, McGuire McLaughlin. McGuire That is a Gen Z name if I've ever heard. McGuire McLaughlin, 19. Arrived at McDonald's in Barrow Beach. Uh, McLaughlin, seen above, ordered, quote, a large amount of food that she paid for. At that point, McGuire, who lives five miles from the restaurant, asked for one dipping sauce in each flavor McDonald's offered. Responded by saying that each pass packet would cost McLaughlin five cents. Quote, at which point a verbal altercation ensued. That's a thing now. You get one sauce. Yeah, I think it's like one sauce per 10 McNuggets. Something like that, yeah. McLaughlin allegedly, quote, began yelling profanities at several employees, stating she would rob the establishment if she didn't get her dipping sauce. Um, adding that she procured procure the sauce by whatever means necessary. The employee, however, could not specify what McLaughlin meant by her comment. I assume she means by whatever means necessary, except paying the 25 cents per. Right, you know, I mean, you could could pay an extra what? There, there are eight different options. So you could pay an extra two dollars for dipping sauce, or you could break into the. You could do a Mission Impossible into the goddamn McDonald's through the air vent with with the sound meter, and you gotta you rope down from the top because you don't want to touch the floor because the floor is lava. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get that sweet and sour. God. When I worked at Starbucks, I had someone, uh, one of my coworkers, someone threatened to beat them up in the parking lot over caramel drizzle. Because he's told them, next time, next time, we'll have to charge you 60 cents for extra caramel. We're not going to do it this time, but next time you have to order it and we have to charge you. And the guy was like, what time do you get off? I'll meet you in the parking lot. Okay, but we're still going to car car charge you for the extra drizzle right. and you're going to be charged with assault. So Right. 
When questioning McLaughlin, police detected alcohol in her breath and noted the teenager's eyes, quote, were glossy and speech was slurred. McLaughlin, the affidavit reports, would momentarily become cooperative, then would begin yelling profanities at them. This is shit you only get away with when you're a white girl with a name like McGuire fucking McLaughlin. McGuire <laughs> McLaughlin. Like, that's a big little lies name. Honey, you got two last names. What happened? Pick one. Pick, Do you even one. know who my father is? I pay a salary. I'm not normally one to bag on like millennials or Gen Z, but um, I hope this is not a trend. Let's say that would make me unhappy. I like I get it. I like the kids today. The world They're... fucking sucks for you guys. The world is literally on fire, but yet also underwater that you can't drink. You can't find a job. You can't afford to live on your, like I understand, the world is a fucking dumpster fire. All you goddamn want is a sweet and sour sauce and they want to take another fucking quarter from you. I get it. This isn't the answer. No. And the people working at that McDonald's are just as fucked as you. So they're not the right target for your rage. Speaking of the people you working... You need to go guillotine a billionaire. Speaking of the people working there being just as fucked. Wonderful segue, Tara. Um, <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, let's see. Michigan, police, Michigan Taco Bell manager trashes restaurant after being called back to work. I feel that. A 22-year-old Jonesville man is behind bars after, quote, going into a rage and causing severe damage to the Hillside Taco Bell. I'm sorry, Bell. that man is 22? He's 22. That's a rough he 22. hard. Wow. Dakota James uh, Jablinski. Dakota James. Dakota James Jablinski. Was arrested Christmas. We're just mean. <laughs> Was arrested Christmas Eve on allegations of being disorderly and malicious to structure property of more than five thousand dollars, more than one thousand dollars, a five-year felony crime. Hillsdale County prosecuting attorney Neil Brady said Monday he was attempting to piece together exactly what led to Jablinski throwing a chair through a window and causing significant damage to inside the restaurant. Brady said in a preliminary a, a preliminary investigation found Jablinski, a manager at the restaurant was at an employee party off-site and was told to go back to work to close the restaurant and clean up. Police recall when Jablinski started destroying property, Brady said, Brady said they initially believed Jab Jab Jablinski was trying to break into the restaurant. So he was at a party, chilling with co-workers, day's done, no more tacos. Hey, dude, got to go back to the tacos. It's Christmas Eve. Well, fuck your tacos then. Yeah, I might do the same thing. Really? <laughs> you would wreck the place? Maybe. See, I'd, wa I'd certainly want to. My option would be just not to go. That's the that's other not option. That's an option, though. Like, when you work in the service industry, that's not an option. Well, no, if you're going to go to the place to knock it the fuck down. True. I guess either way, you're probably getting fired. You might as well just not go. Just save yeah. yourself the trouble. Be like, no, I ain't go. Be like, nah, fuck you. Right. Don't don't be like fuck you with jail. This is this is this is a fuck you with a side of jail. But just, I can certainly understand the impulse. Just get the fuck you, it's less expensive. Like I, I've had managers who like they have to save payroll. So they schedule everyone for the bare minimum hours, but then every single day they're texting everyone begging you to come in. So they schedule for you they schedule you for like fifteen hours for the week, but then literally every day. You're getting texts at 9 a.m. Can you come in? Can you work today? Fuck you. I will burn down the mall. Just, it, I, don't go. Just don't. If you get called back in and you're like, I'm done with this shit, be done with the shit. Yeah, just don't go in. Don't be done with a vengeance. This is, this is a little bit of escalation on your part. You're not, I mean, what did you think was going to happen? He's going to break the place down and keep the job? That's not how that works. I mean, again, I do understand the impulse. But something in you has to stop you. <laughs> Radioactive walrus. 
Do you hear the taco sing, singing the songs of angry men? It is the cry of the oppressed who have to work on the weekend. <sighs> Good God. I mean, at least they have Pepsi there. <laughs> that, that is, I love how that is like, that, that is like, if Pepsi gets added, it's like, oh, okay, that's okay. I don't really, like, Taco Bell's food isn't that great, but they have, I can get like a vat of Pepsi. Uh, our last story this week is you got to respect the hustle. You, you got to respect the hustle. I mean, it's still illegal, but you got to respect the hustle. Chicago swim cho- coach charged got 30000 in pool rentals. Oh. A swim coach at a Chicago high school collected nearly $30,000 by leasing the pool to outside groups. <laughs> School District's Inspector General didn't identify the coach Monday, <clears throat> but said the allegations led to criminal charges. The Chicago Sun-Times, citing court records, identified him as Andy Paro, who is the swim coach at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, Paro was the swim coach at Whitney Young High School from 2009 to 2018, winning six league championships. Inspector General Adding said... Adding the word count, are we? Say what? Adding the word count a bit? A bit. Okay. The inspector general said the coach made side deals with three outside groups that wanted to use the pool. Each of the rental groups of the outside groups was off the books, violating CPS rules and covering the rental of CPS property. The coach was essentially stealing money that should have gone to school. So what he did was he had the keys. He just took the money and didn't tell nobody. Pretty slick. Except, you know, the whole getting caught. Except I remember what my high school pool was like. And I wouldn't have paid money to use it. (laughs) One of the perks of being a baton twirler at my high school, I was in a group called Rhythm Marching, who you had the baton twirlers, the kick line, and the flag corps that performed at the parades and stuff. And one of the benefits of that was you always had gym last period of the day because it alternated with Rhythm Marching. Which meant when you had to do swimming, you didn't have to go around with wet hair all day at school, which was great. The downside of that was it was Long Island in the 90s. So, like, a lot of hair product. A lot of hair product (laughs) being used on Long Island in the 90s. So, by the end of the day, the pool had, like, a film. (laughs) That shit was was flammable. (laughs) <laughs> like if you had a match you could probably like the pool on fire it was kind of like pudding skin oh god oh you know like you make instant pudding at home it has that skin the pool oh. kind of had like pudding skin that you had to break through mm. i wouldn't have paid money to use that pool personally <laughs> maybe chicago schools maybe they keep maybe they're better on the upkeep maybe there's not as much hair product these days uh, I just, I, you gotta respect the hustle, but come on. What happened? Did somebody show up while you were renting the place out? Who are those people? <laughs> S- stu- students. Yeah. They're 80 years old. They're remedial students. Yeah. ESL. <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess the first thing we learned this week is, um, you got, you got it. The hustle is just, that's half the battle. The other is a little bit of brains. A little, little, just. Geo Joe says, knowing is half the bo- battle. Not knowing what, know anything. No, just no things. No things. Um, we've learned that if your job is screwing you over and you have an option between screwing them back or just not doing it anymore, just don't do it anymore. If at the end of the day, either way, you're not going to have that job, but one of those ways you're also going to be in prison, go with the just not having the job. Right. Um, we've learned that you got to pay for your dipping sauce no matter who your dad is. <laughs> Sucks, but it's true. We've learned lottery tickets do not use super glue. <laughs> Pro tip. For, yeah. for, um. We've Did learned that with money too, like take a dollar bill and just super glue twenties over it. We've learned that fireworks in America, you gotta take that back. It's a different era now. Yeah. Tone that shit down. Um, 
We're all terrified. You're not please, helping. Please. We're all very nervous all the time. And finally, we've learned bullets go through many things. So make sure your damn safety is on, you ridiculous woman. Maybe don't be the douchebag that takes gun selfies in the first place. Maybe don't be that insecure, sad douchebag. God damn it, Karen. Just, you know, don't. What is it? Don't. The rule is don't point a gun at anything you don't want to kill or destroy. That's the rule. As I understand it, yes. I'm not a fan also, of that. Like, the one time he had me handle his guns, he was like, always <clears throat> assume it's loaded. Like, I just took these apart and put them back together. Doesn't matter. Assume it's loaded. I'm, I'm not a fan of Apple either, but come on now. 